Members of Parliament will debate on Wednesday, November 22 amendments to Singapore's constitution that will allow the President to accept appointments in foreign and international organisations. In tabling the amendments earlier this month, the Prime Minister's Office PMO said that accepting such positions can enhance Singapore's international standing and help advance national interests. The Constitution currently does not empower the President to take up public roles where he acts in his private capacity. President Mr. Thaman Shamugaram, who was sworn in on September 14, resigned from all positions in the government and the People's Action Party to stand in the presidential election. He currently holds various positions on international bodies including Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Group of 30 G30, an independent Global Council of Economic and Financial Leaders, and co-chair of the Global Commission on the Economics of Water. Mr. Taman also sits on the Advisory Board for the UN Human Development Report and on the Board of Trustees for the World Economic Forum. The Constitution of the Republic of Singapore Amendment, no. 3 Bill, if passed, will enable the President to perform such roles when the Cabinet advises that it is in the national interest to accept and hold that role. Also, for the President to take up such roles. They must not be prohibited under the Constitution from performing the functions of that office. For example, Article 19A1 bans the President from actively engaging in any commercial enterprise. During its proposal, the PMO said that the Cabinet may also advise the President against saying or doing anything in performing the functions of such an office. The President must also relinquish an office if the Cabinet advises him or her to do so. MPs will also discuss the hours-long disruption on November 1 that affected the websites of Singapore's public healthcare institutions, including all hospitals and polyclinics. Health tech agency Synex has attributed the outage to a distributed denial-of-service DDoS attack, in which online services or sites are overwhelmed by unusually high volumes of data traffic. Leader of the opposition Pritam Singh asked about the remedial measures taken to mitigate future disruptions. As did MP Po Lee, San P. P. Sambuang, who also asked about the impact on users. MP Sylvia Lim W. P. L. Janet wanted to know when the authorities would make public the report of the event. While MP Jessica Tan P. P. S. Coast asked if the Health Ministry had any insight into the motive for the attack. Earlier this month, SPH Media entered into an agreement to acquire technology media company Tech in Asia TIA as part of broader transformation efforts. The financial terms of the deal were not disclosed. MP Louis Chua W. P. Senkang asked whether the government specifies restrictions on the use of the 180 million Singapore dollar annual funding to SPH Media Trust SMT, such as transactions involving mergers and acquisitions. He also wanted to know if the government was aware of the price of SMT's acquisition of tech in Asia and if there are measures in place to prevent agglomeration risks in the local media industry. MPs at Wednesday's sitting will also discuss the effectiveness of the government's ScamShield app, which checks incoming SMS messages and calls against the list of known scam numbers and filters them if there is a match. MP Yip Hon Won P. P. O. Chu Kong asked if the ministry has been able to track its effectiveness in preventing scams and the percentage of the population who have downloaded the app. He also wanted to know if ScamShield or similar measures will be introduced to identify and block scammers from using social media and e-commerce platforms. MP Derek Go P. Pine soon asked if the app complements malware detection apps used by banking customers. Based on the order paper released on Tuesday, other questions that MPs felt included one from MP Haney So P. P. Marceling U.T., who asked if the Ministry of Communications and Information had considered solutions to defray costs that would allow the National Library Board NLB to continue its subscription to Udemy business. 
The NLB announced earlier this month that it would stop offering access to the e-learning platform from December 15, citing a significant cost increase as one of the reasons. Udemy offers courses on topics such as software development, leadership, marketing, sales and programming. MP Nadia Amat Samdin P. Pyong M.O. Kyo filed a question on the use of the messaging app Telegram for selling and distributing sexually explicit material. She asked the Minister for Home Affairs about the current measures to tackle the rising number of such Telegram channels, in light of the chat group SG Nasi Lamak. At its peak, more than 44,000 members were able to access pornographic material that was shared non-consensually.